What is done under pressure of society and circumstances does not matter much, for it is mostly mechanical, mere reacting to impacts. The Guru demands one thing only, clarity and intensity of purpose, a sense of responsibility for oneself. The very reality of the world must be questioned. Who is the Guru after all? He who knows the state in which there is neither the world nor the thought of it. He is the Supreme Teacher. To find Him means to reach the state in which imagination is no longer taken for reality. Please, understand that the Guru stands for reality, for truth, for what is. He is a realist in the highest sense of the term. He cannot and shall not come to terms with the mind and its delusions. He comes to take you to the real. Don't expect him to do anything else. To him, your questions about obedience and discipline do not make sense. For in his eyes, the person you take yourself to be does not exist. Your questions are about a non-existing person. What exists for you does not exist for him. What you take for granted he denies absolutely. He wants you to see yourself as he sees you. Then, you will not need a guru to obey and follow, for you will obey and follow your own reality. Realize that whatever you think yourself to be is just a stream of events that while all happens, comes and goes, you alone are the changeless among the changeful, the self-evident among the inferred. Separate the observed from the observer and abandon false identifications. Do your work. When you have a moment free, look within. If you are earnest, you will use your leisure fully. That is enough. Your difficulty lies in your wanting reality and being afraid of it at the same time. You are afraid of it because you do not know it. The familiar things are known, you feel secure with them. The unknown is uncertain and therefore dangerous. But to know reality is to be in harmony with it, and in harmony there is no place for fear. In deep silence, the self contemplates the body. It is like the white paper on which nothing is written yet. Be like that infant. Instead of trying to be this or that, 
be happy to be. You will be a fully awakened witness of the field of consciousness. When you love the self and nothing else, you go beyond the selfish and the unselfish. All distinctions lose their meaning. Love of one and love of all merge together in love, pure and simple, addressed to none, denied to none. Stay in that love. Go deeper and deeper into it. Investigate yourself and love the investigation, and you will solve not only your own problems, but also the problems of humanity. The main thing is earnestness. Be honest with yourself and nothing will betray you. Virtues and powers are mere tokens for children to play with. They are useful in the world, but do not take you out of it. To go beyond, you need alert immobility, quiet attention. Your body is food transformed. As your food, gross and subtle, so will be your health. Sex is an acquired habit. Go beyond. As long as your focus is on the body, you will remain in the clutches of food and sex, fear and death. Find yourself and be free. When you sit quiet and watch yourself, all kinds of things may come to the surface. Do nothing about them. Don't react to them. As they have come, so will they go by themselves. All that matters is mindfulness, total awareness of oneself or rather, of one's mind. The observer is beyond observation. What is observable is not the real self. You can observe the observation, but not the observer. You know you are the ultimate observer by direct insight, not by a logical process based on observation. You are what you are, but you know what you are not. The self is known as being. The not-self is known as transient. But in reality, all is in the mind. The observed, observation, and observer are mental constructs. The self alone is. To divide and particularize is the mind's very nature. There is no harm in dividing. 
But separation goes against fact. Things and people are different, but they are not separate. Nature is one. Reality is one. There are opposites, but no opposition. There is a difference between work and mere activity. All nature works. Work is nature. Nature is work. On the other hand, activity is based on desire and fear, on longing to possess and enjoy, on fear of pain and annihilation. Work is by the whole, for the whole. Activity is by oneself, for oneself. Do what you feel like doing. Don't bully yourself. Violence will make you hard and rigid. Do not fight with what you take to be obstacles on your way. Just be interested in them. Watch them. Observe. Inquire. Let anything happen, good or bad. But don't let yourself be submerged by what happens. The mind must learn that beyond the moving mind there is the background of awareness which does not change. The mind must come to know the true self and respect it and cease covering it up, like the moon which obscures the sun during a solar eclipse. Just realize that nothing observable or experienceable is you, or binds you. Take no notice of what is not yourself. To be aware is to be awake. Unaware means asleep. You are aware anyhow, you need not try to be. What you need is to be aware of being aware. Be aware deliberately and consciously. Broaden and deepen the field of awareness. You are always conscious of the mind, but you are not aware of yourself as being conscious. Look at it this way. The mind produces thoughts ceaselessly, even when you do not look at them. When you know what is going on in your mind, you call it consciousness. This is your waking state. Your consciousness shifts from sensation to sensation, from perception to perception, from idea to idea in endless succession. Then comes awareness, the direct insight into the whole of consciousness, the totality of the mind. The mind is like a river, flowing ceaselessly in the bed of the body. You identify yourself for a moment with some particular ripple and call it my thought. All you are conscious of is your mind. Awareness is the cognizance of consciousness as a whole.
Don't say everybody is conscious. Say there is consciousness in which everything appears and disappears. Our minds are just waves on the ocean of consciousness. As waves, they come and go. As ocean, they are infinite and eternal. Know yourself as the ocean of being, the womb of all existence. These are all metaphors, of course. The reality is beyond description. You can know it only by being it. While the mind is centered in the body and consciousness is centered in the mind, awareness is free. The body has its urges and mind its pains and pleasures. Awareness is unattached and unshaken. It is lucid, silent, peaceful, alert, and unafraid without desire and fear. Meditate on it as your true being and try to be it in your daily life, and you shall realize it in its fullness. Mind is interested in what happens while awareness is interested in the mind itself. The child is after the toy, but the mother watches the child, not the toy. By looking tirelessly, I became quite empty, and with that emptiness, all came back to me, except the mind. I find I have lost the mind, irretrievably. I am neither conscious nor unconscious. I am beyond the mind and its various states and conditions. Distinctions are created by the mind and apply to the mind only. I am pure consciousness itself, unbroken awareness of all that is. I am in a more real state than yours. I am undistracted by the distinctions and separations which constitute a person. As long as the body lasts, it has its needs like any other but my mental process has come to an end. I am not a person in your sense of the word, though I may appear a person to you. I am that infinite ocean of consciousness in which all happens. I am also beyond all existence and cognition, pure bliss of being. There is nothing I feel separate from, hence I am all. No thing is me so I am nothing. The same power that makes the fire burn and the water flow, the seeds sprout and the trees grow, makes me answer your questions. There is nothing personal about me though the language and the style may appear personal. A 
person is a set pattern of desires and thoughts and resulting actions. There is no such pattern in my case. There is nothing I desire or fear. How can there be a pattern? Life will escape. The body will die, but it will not affect me in the least. Beyond space and time, I am uncaused, uncausing, yet the very matrix of existence. My teacher told me to hold on to the sense I am tenaciously and not to swerve from it for even a moment. I did my best to follow his advice and in a comparatively short time I realized within myself the truth of his teaching. All I did was to remember his teaching, his face, his words constantly. This brought an end to the mind. In the stillness of the mind, I saw myself as I am, unbound. The search for reality is itself the movement of reality. In a way, all search is for the real bliss or the bliss of the real. One has to understand that the search for reality or God or Guru and the search for the self are the same. When one is found, all are found. When I am and God is become in your mind indistinguishable, then something will happen and you will know without a trace of doubt that God is because you are, and you are because God is. The two are one. Destiny refers only to name and shape. Since you are neither body nor mind, destiny has no control over you. You are completely free. The cup is conditioned by its shape, material use, and so on. But the space within the cup is free. It happens to be in the cup only when viewed in connection with the cup. Otherwise, it is just space. As long as there is a body, you appear to be embodied. Without the body, you are not disembodied. You just are. To be free from thoughts is itself meditation. You begin by letting thoughts flow and watching them. The very observation slows down the mind till it stops altogether. Once the mind is quiet, keep it quiet. Don't get bored with peace. Be in it. Go deeper 
into it. Watch your thoughts and watch yourself watching the thoughts. The state of freedom from all thoughts will happen suddenly, and by the bliss of it, you shall recognize it. illness begins in the mind. Take care of the mind first by tracing and eliminating all wrong ideas and emotions. Then live and work disregarding illness and think no more of it. With the removal of causes, the effect is bound to depart. Man becomes what he believes himself to be. Abandon all ideas about yourself, and you will find yourself to be the pure witness, beyond all that can happen to the body or the mind. People come to you for advice. How do you know what to answer? As I hear the question, so do I hear the answer. And how do you know that your answer is right? Once I know the true source of the answers, I need not doubt them. From a pure source, only pure water will flow. I am not concerned with people's desires and fears. I am in tune with facts, not with opinions. Man takes his name and shape to be himself, while I take nothing to be myself. Were I to think myself to be a body known by its name, I would not have been able to answer your questions. Were I to take you to be a mere body, there would be no benefit to you from my answers. No true teacher indulges in opinions. He sees things as they are and shows them as they are. If you take people to be what they think themselves to be, you will only hurt them as they hurt themselves so grievously all the time. But if you see them as they are in reality, it will do them enormous good. If they ask you what to do, what practices to adopt, which way of life to follow, answer, do nothing, just be. In being, all happens naturally. <laughs>